Hi everyone. In this lecture, we are going to study about Shannon noiseless coding theorem. So, the Shannon noiseless coding theorem is also known as source coding theorem. So, let's understand about the source coding first. We know that a discrete memoryless source emits some number of symbols. So, the conversion of the output of the discrete memoryless source into the sequence of binary symbol is called as source coding. So, this is all about the source coding. Let's have a look at the average code word length. So, what is average code word length? Let the discrete memoryless source generates m number of symbols that ranges from x1, x2 till x of m and each of these source have some code word length that is also denoted by l1, l2 till l of m. These all symbols that are generated by discrete memoryless source have some probabilities that are ranges from p1, p2 till p of m. So p1 shows the probability of occurrence of symbol x1, p2 shows the probability of occurrence of symbol x2, likewise pm shows the probability of occurrence of symbol x of m. So if you want to calculate the average code word length, then it can be calculated as capital L that is equals to summation i ranges from 1 to m pi li where this m denotes the number of symbols that is emitted by discrete memoryless source. p of i denotes the probability of occurrence of these symbols and li is nothing but the code word length of these symbols that are emitted by discrete memoryless source. So, this is all about these two terms that is source coding and average code word length. Now let us have a look at the Shannon's noiseless coding theorem. So here are the three statements that are associated with the Shannon noiseless coding theorem. So according to this theorem the average code word length that is L of a binary code should be always larger than or e at least equals to the entropy of that source that is denoted by X. So in the mathematical expression we can write it as log base 2 of average code word length should be greater than or equals to the entropy that is H of X. Let us give it as equation number first. Similarly, the average code word length should always be less than h of x plus 1. So, it can be rewritten as log base 2 of L is less than h of x plus 1. So, we give it as equation number 2. On comparing both the equation number 1 and equation number 2, we get to know that the entropy that is h of x should always be less than or equals to log base 2 of L should be less than h of x plus 1. So we get this expression on combining the equation 1 and equation 2. And this is all about the Shannon noiseless coding theorem. Now let us have a look at the question that is based on Shannon noiseless coding theorem. So it is very easy question. So a discrete memoryless source generate the symbols, two symbols that is x1 and x2, having the probability of occurrence that is px1 equals to px2 that is equals to 0 0.5. So these two symbols occurs with the equiprobable likelihood or we can say that these two symbols are equiprobable because their probability of occurrence is equal to each other that is 0 0.5 what we need to do is we just need to check whether the source coding theorem satisfy here or not so let's solve this question since we know that the probability of occurrence of symbol x1 is equal to 0 0.5 also the probability of occurrence of symbol x2 is also 0 0.5 that is given in our question. Also, 
the entropy that is denoted by h of x can be given as summation i equals to 1 to since there are two symbols that's why in place of n we will write 2 here p of x i log base 2 1 over p of x i expanding the formula for the entropy for these two symbols we can read it as p of x1 log base 2 1 over p of x1 plus p x2 log base 2 1 over p x2 so simply putting the values that we have in this question of p x1 and p x2 we write 0 0.5 log base 2 1 over 0 0.5 plus in place of px2 we write 0 0.5 log base 2 1 over 0 0.5 on solving this we will get the value of h of x equals to 1 only so let me give it as equation number 1 similarly if we calculate h of x plus 1 then will comes out to be 2 only so this is our equation number 2 since we know that here are the two symbols that is x1 and x2 that's why we can say that the average code word length that is L value will be also equals to 2 therefore if we calculate the value of log base 2 of L then it will be equals to log base 2 of 2 that will result into 1 only so this is our equation number 3 that is the value of log base 2 of L is equals to 1 since from the expression of Shannon noiseless coding theorem we know that its expression says that h of x value should be less than or equals to log base 2 of l and its value should be less than h of x plus 1 so simply writing all the values and checking whether it satisfies or not here the h of x value is 1 that is less than or equals to log base 2 value is 1 so yes it is equals to each other that's why this portion satisfies this condition also the value of h of x plus 1 is 2 so yes it satisfies this equation so we can say that this question or the source coding theorem satisfies here it satisfies source coding theorem so this is all about the numerical that is based on source coding theorem or Shannon noiseless coding theorem now let us have a look at the two basic concepts that are also related with the source coding theorem that is fixed length code and variable length code so what do you mean by fixed length code when the symbol generated by the discrete memory data source are equiprobable that is all the symbols have equal probability of occurrence then we take the equal number of bits to represent that symbol so the value of r that is equal to the number of bits will be equal to the seal value of log base 2 l this formula will be applicable only when the value of l is in the even power of 2 but in case if the value of l is not in the even power of 2 then r will be equal to floor value of 
log base 2 L plus 1. So this symbol denotes seal value and this symbol represents floor value. Okay. What do you mean by seal value? If your value x is equal to 1.6 then for the seal value it will be equal to 2 but for the floor value if it is equal to 1.6 then in case of floor value it will be equal to 1 only so this is all about the fixed length code where the L is nothing but number of symbols now let us have a look at the variable length code when the symbols generated by the discrete memory less source are not equally probable then we take unequal number of bits to represent a symbol and this is all about the concept of the fixed length code and the variable length code if you like my content then do subscribe my channel and please hit the like button thank you